right guys, I'm here with Marcel. Marcel's gonna help me out with a pretty cool trick. So Marcel, why don't you just start, give this a shuffle, okay? Do your best, give it a mix. Can I throw it on the ground? Uh, but then we're gonna have to pick it up, so just, uh, just do your best in the hand shuffle. Whatever you can do, you can mix it however you want. But then I want you to check out something else about this. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Very good yeah. shot. very good. I wanted to make sure there's nothing nothing special about these cards. Make sure they're regular, make sure, look for anything. Is there, are they sticky at all? Are any sticking together? Or they feel like regular cards, right? It's a regular deck, there's nothing wrong with them, you none facing the other way. way. What type of stickiness do you mean? Well, there's a special kind of deck that has this sticky thing. I just want you to assure them that this is not that special kind of yeah, deck. Yeah, they're pretty normal. There's nothing sticky about them. They'll know what nothing I'm talking sticky. about. Nothing sticky. All right, sticky. so here's what I'm going to do. Those are shuffled. I'm going to make a prediction about a decision that I think you're going to make in the future. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go with a card here. I'm going to go with this one. Oops, this one. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take this card, and I'm going to put it, watch, I'm going to put it face down in a face up deck. So now, out of all of these cards, there's only one card that's facing the other way. Now Marcel, I want you to take your time, think about this, name any card that you want. Ace of Spades. The Ace of Spades. Yeah. You're sure? Yeah. Because look, you could have said any one of these, <laughs> any one of these cards, my man, any one, look. Yeah. And there's that one card in there from the very start, right? Yeah. Now watch. If you would have said the Four of Hearts mm -hmm. or the King of Clubs, this wouldn't work, but you said what? Ace of Spades. Ace of Spades. And look, if we go through, the only card that's faced the other way, from the start, take it out. If this is the Ace of Spades, man? <laughs> take a look. I'm going to subscribe to this channel. As should you. <laughs> that's it. Subscribe. All right? Read Fairy. <laughs> What is good guys, it is Reed and welcome back to a dope video. Today I'm going to be teaching you an awesome effect of mine. It is an impromptu invisible deck using a regular shuffle deck of cards anytime, anywhere. Now, why, why did I come up with this? Well, to be honest, I have never in my entire life owned an invisible deck. I don't know why, just never bought one, you know. Uh, there's a lot of cool things you can do with it, but personally, I just not felt the need or the interest. I don't work much with gimmick decks. I don't work at all with gimmick decks, actually. And, you know, that's just the way I like to do it. I, I find um, doing impromptu, you know, regular deck magic, people are always the most blown away by, especially when they can search all they want and never find anything with the deck. That's just my preference. But the invisible deck concept is a very neat concept, a very wonderful effect and something that you know, I spent some time working on to come up with an impromptu version. Now, I know Sean, a couple months ago, maybe a lot of months ago now, put out a great um, handling on his. His did use a double backer, so not, I suppose, totally regular deck, but pretty close nonetheless. Mine is 100% a regular deck, and that is the reason that I prefer it and love it so much. Now, this is gonna use the open index principle that I taught in one of the last videos. So if you don't know, go check that out because that is important. You need to understand that concept. I'll briefly cover it here. But um, the context here, it is so well hidden and so well disguised that this is probably the perfect trick to practice the open index because you don't have to be incredibly fast. Obviously, as you get better, get faster, this trick gets more amazing. And yeah, it's absolutely awesome. Got to give a bit of credit to Boris Wilde. This is going to use his card reversal that I learned from his Mark Deck project. I can't remember which it was exactly called, but it's, an, it's a Boris Wilde card reversal. Awesome reversal. I use it for a couple different things. I use it in this as well. So uh, without any further ado, let's get into my impromptu invisible deck. I hope you guys love it. All right, guys. So I hope you liked that. It's a quick hitter, great opener, and something I use pretty often. It's a really killer effect and this really mimics the invisible deck quite a lot. Um, obviously the concept is the same but even the handling is, uh, is, is fairly close and I'd say almost as clean as you can get. My goal was how can I access the card and reverse it absolutely as quickly as possible uh, with the fewest moves. And the original way had several more moves than this but I was able to just cut, cut out a move here and there and finally it's down to about two moves and takes about five seconds to do the entire location and reversal, which is pretty incredible. And that's really what it comes down to, guys. To make this effect as best as possible, you have to do it quickly, but there's also a really nice subtlety that I don't know if you guys caught in there that uh, really sort of 
helps solidify this effect. So step one is, well, have the deck shuffled by the spectator. I think that's key here. You're gonna have them shuffle it. Then you're gonna take the deck back and you tell them you're gonna make a prediction about something you're gonna do in the future or any pattern that you want. But here we're gonna, you know, take a psychological chance here. Take a chance. If you have any sort of inclination as to what card you think they're gonna name, pick that card, right? Give, give us a chance at a pure miracle. If not, I would recommend going with the Seven of Hearts. That is always my go-to. Um, it is a card that I find is named the most if I ask someone to name a card. If it's a woman, I may go with the Queen of Hearts. You could do Ace of Spades as well. It's always a good choice, Jack of Spades. But I would, I pretty much always go with the Seven of Hearts. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna go through the deck and look for the card that you are gonna, you know, make your guess with. And you're gonna, you're gonna upjog that card and you're gonna say, I'm gonna go with this card right here. Take it out, but make sure no one sees it. While you take it out and you say this one here, you're gonna flip the deck over with your deck hand, okay? So it's gonna be face up and you're just gonna flip it over however you wanna do that, okay? Really no method to this, just sort of flip it over and square it back up. And then you say, I'm gonna leave it face down in the face up deck. Now here's the first little part of the method. You're actually only putting it, you wanna put it about fourth from the top, okay? But you're gonna hold the deck like this, so it's straight on pointing at them. So from this angle, they can't really tell where in the deck it's going in. But look, it's only going, in this case, fifth from the top. Now, it doesn't matter where it goes, but you know you want it about fourth, aim for fourth. It's fine if it's third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, but the closer to the top, the better. And I, you, know, you don't really want it at one or two. So you found the card, you've up jogged it, you pull it out and flip the deck. And you say, I'm gonna leave it face up in a face down deck. You're just gonna riffle off roughly three or four cards with your thumb, place the seven in there and slowly push it in. And then you're gonna flip the deck face up in your hand, okay? So now that seven is in this case, fourth from the top, but it's right near the top. And you just say, I'm gonna put this card face up in a face down deck. Now you have a great justification to spread and get set up for the open index. So the idea here is you wanna spread as many cards as you can into your right hand. For me, it's about 13, 14 but you need to make sure you can still see every index. Even this one that's covered, I know is the King of Diamonds because I can tell by the shape, but you want to be able to at least be able to see every index, okay? So that's just a bit of practice where you can spread nice and evenly so that every index is visible. And then as, as many cards as you can get, you just break off and you're gonna push over as many cards as you can with your thumb exposing the index. So for me, it's about four. And you do that as you say, now one card out of all of these cards is facing the other way. Then you quickly go into name any card that you want. And here you're just doing the open index. So if they say one of the cards in this hand, you're gonna break off at that card, so queen of hearts reverse spread, and that's all done as you're coming down to show them, and then you can just shift that card to the top of the deck. Now with this, it's kind of important. I said in the open index video, and guys, make sure you go watch that video. Don't try to just follow this tutorial. It's very important you understand all the mechanics, and more importantly, the psychology behind the open index. But anyway, like I said, when you do the reverse spread, in regular cases, it doesn't matter how many cards you end up shifting to the top, because the king's always on the top there. This one, try to aim for just getting the king, because the more cards you put on the top here, the higher up you're gonna move the seven. See, last time I had a couple of cards and it moved the seventh, the seven card that I had originally reversed up to like the you know eighth position now, which isn't ideal. So when you're, you're controlling that card to the top, try to just control the one card. Now, if it's not here, if it's here, you would just kind of execute the, the regular cull. But the idea is if it's not any one of these, you can, because you can see a third of the deck right now. You can see about 20 cards, about one third of the deck. You can instantly know if their card's here. If it's not, you're just gonna come together as the cards are facing you, right? So you do, you're spreading. They never see any of the cards. You say, name any card. If it's not here, you're gonna close and open the second third of the deck as you're coming down into view to show them that they could have named any one of these cards. If the card's here, you just need to make sure you cover it as you come down. So let's say it's the 10 of hearts, and then you would call it out to the top, okay? And if it's in the last third, you simply go like this, name any card, they name it. You say, look, of course you could have chose any one of these cards and they're all different. Now, obviously, if you get to the end, it doesn't really matter if they see the face down card because they already know that there's a card face down. Yes, they will notice potentially that it's close to the bottom, but that's really not that big of a deal here, okay? And that very rarely happens. So once you get your spread, right? They say the 10 of spades. You say, perfect, you could have named any one of these cards. 
any one at all. And of course they're all different. In this moment, I'm controlling the 10 to the top. Then you will need to instantly get into the reversal as quickly as you can, right? All of this, the quicker the better, because if you hesitate a bit on the open index, it's okay, but it gives them an extra chance to think, oh, maybe he's doing something. Why isn't he just showing me this card right away, right? The longer we wait, the more they're gonna think, why didn't he just show me the card right away? So that's why we need to be quick here. So, seven of spades, I say perfect. You could have chosen any one of these cards. Square up, and I've controlled the seven of spades to the bottom using the open index. Again, with the open index, we, need to, we wanna square the deck as quickly as possible so they don't remember or feel like we ever did anything. Now, as quickly as possible, you're gonna do a pinky pull down and get a break under that card, and we're about to get into the reversal. You could do a thumb riffle, but I find the pinky pull down is quicker, so I would highly recommend doing that, right? You close up the deck, and instantly I have my, my pinky break, okay? Now, you're gonna transfer the pinky break to a thumb break, okay? So for that, you just come over the top, grip it with the thumb, and swing cut about half of the cards, now, instead of just swing cutting into the hand, what you're gonna do is you're gonna swing cut and as you, as you grip the card in the, the crotch of the thumb here, you're gonna pull it away but not off the deck. You're gonna then re-grip with the index on top so you can kind of hold it all like this. And you're gonna let it fall and flip over into this hand. So that all happens with your break that you're holding as a thumb break. And you say, now you could have said the 10 of hearts and you flip it away. You, you could have said the two of clubs, and here's where the move happens. You're pushing it off, holding it, flipping it, and as you come down, you deposit that card on top, right? So just as it flips, you deposit it on top like that. You just let go at the break, okay? But that happens in such a fluid sort of motion. So you open, boom, and obviously you don't come away with it to reveal it. You're just gonna flip, let it come like this, and then you, as you say, or the jack of hearts, you're shifting your body to the side, so you cover this, and you're just rotating this back on top of the deck and squaring up. And what you've done is you've now reversed the selection at roughly the middle of the deck, okay? The seven of spades in this case. So let's say they name the king of diamonds. I close up, I say, of course, you could have named the seven of spades or the six of hearts and I square up, and I've now reversed the king of diamonds. So it's a very quick, very awesome reversal, and that's why it works so well with this. So let's go over that from the open index. You have it, they say the six of clubs, you say perfect, you could have named any one of these cards, and it's crazy because you could have said the five of spades, could have said the jack of hearts, but instead you said the six of clubs, and in that I've reversed the six of clubs. One other little thing that's important, right? You get your break, do the swing cut and drop. And then the second you've deposited the card and you're coming back up, the justification as you're turning is you're pointing with this tap, with this top finger. Now you could have chosen the six of clubs, right? That's why, that's the, that's the justification for the pause. You swing it and you say, you could have picked the six of clubs, boom, or the nine of clubs. So you do the deposit and you come back or the nine of clubs. And then I like to just put this back and hold it for a second, right? You take this, you put it back, hold it, and then you come around and you square. You instantly, I just push over, bevel the deck a bit, and do a nice fan. And this fan that I do, I just conceal the top few cards a little bit. Remember, their card's at about the fourth position. So now you get this beautiful display of every card except for the one that's flipped. You hand it, you, you stick out your hand, you let them pull it out, and they find their card the one that's flipped. It's brilliant, it's really, really brilliant. Now for the cleanup, after you've closed the deck and the heat's off, what you do is you slightly turn your hand this way and you peel off cards until you get to the face up card. Because remember, it's right near the top of the deck. So you turn it this way so they can't see and you're peeling. There, I see it on top, so then I throw those cards onto the bottom. Now it's face up on the bottom. And then I'm simply gonna readjust, take it in an overhand shuffle grip. So I'm about to overhand shuffle. Place these fingers here, and I'm gonna flip it around in the action of an overhand shuffle. So it just goes like that. And I've overhand shuffled it, right? So again, their card is near the top. So again, you do this over here so they can't see it, but I'll show you exposed. So I'm shuffling, the second I see it, I throw those on top. Then I put these fingers right on the, on the card, and I push it and pivot it underneath. 
as I start to throw off cards in the action of an overhand shuffle and that gets it back to the bottom. So that is the cleanup. So real quick recap, they shuffle, they hand you back the deck, you up jog your prediction. Try to make it something that you think will hit. As you do that, you flip the deck over, bring it up so it's eye level so they can't tell where you put the card in the deck, riffle off three cards roughly and place it in fairly quickly just in, so that you know it, it helps with the illusion. Now that card is a few cards from the top. You're going to flip the deck over and say, now one card out of all of these cards is face down. I want you to name any card that you want, right? As you say, any of these cards, that's your justification for spreading, right? Now one card out of all of these cards is face down. Name any card you want. They say 10 of spades. You say perfect. Now, of course, you could have named any one of these cards. And as you can see, all of these cards are different. We execute the open index close up as quickly as we can, right? With, and now you've controlled the 10 of spades to the top. So let's say they, say they name six of clubs, you say perfect, because of course you could have named any one of these cards. So all of these cards are different. That's how quickly I got the card under control. Instantly pull down, get a pinky break. And then I say, now you could have named the nine of diamonds or the ace of spades, but you just happen to name six of, of clubs, I think it was. Uh, and then another little subtlety, you can kind of fan here at the top just to make sure they see every card and get close to the bottom without revealing that, that top card. Let them pull out the card, reveal it's their six of clubs. You know, close the fan, push everything back in, start peeling off cards until you see the card on top and then fix it back and you are now totally clean. So a few little subtleties I wanted to comment on here. When you do the spread, and they have the, and they see their card face down here. Sometimes, you know, I always fan the cards towards me just before I come down. So it kind of looks like this, like they're slightly towards me. I don't want to go like this so they could maybe get a glimpse of the, their card there and kind of ruin the build up to the effect. So I'll go like this. And all you need to do is instead of starting your finger at the bottom here, you start it up a little bit higher and that'll keep a clump, a little clump at the bottom, but it's only a clump of a couple cards to conceal that one. Right? So you just need to make sure when you spread, you spread up a little bit higher instead of starting your finger all the way at the bottom and that'll leave a little bit of a clump down here which will conceal the other flipped card. And you have this really nice display. As a subtlety, I like to kind of flip through them for a second and then let them pull it out. But like I said, I'll fan it towards me just a bit so that just in case this card is revealed, as I come down, I'll pinch and, and cover it. So you just pinch the cards and you cover it as you come into view, right? Just a quick little uh, sort of safety net. Another really important subtlety, guys. Uh, this is key. So this is really important. Think about this. If you actually got the card right, if you actually got the card correct that you reversed, you would be a little bit excited or astonished or happy, right? So you need to act that way the second they name their card. And that's why in the performance I started to giggle a little bit and laugh. So because we made the prediction beforehand, we already theoretically know what the card is. So we know if we're right before they do. So we go like this, we say name any card. The second they say 10 of diamonds, even though I just reversed, I think it was the jack of clubs, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna start to get a little giggity and be like 10 of diamonds, really? Right, so I'll be like, 10 of diamonds, really? Out of all of these cards you, you could have named, and you said the, the 10 of diamonds, you're sure? Right, you can hear it in my voice. I'm a little bit astonished, I'm laughing. I'm like, you're sure, really, that's crazy, right? I say things like that. That's crazy, you could have named any card. You're sure you want the 10 of diamonds? Because you could have said the seven of diamonds, you could have said the eight of spades. But of course you said the 10 of diamonds, and there's only one card that's reversed out of all of these, the 10 of diamonds. So you see how it's important that I act as if I already know that they got the card right, because think about it like this. If I just reversed the seven of diamonds, and they said seven of diamonds, and I said, really, out of all of these, you could have said any card. And of course, the only card that is reversed is the seven of diamonds. It's not exciting, and it also feels like, okay, you know, he must have done something. Like, why wouldn't I be excited? Why would he just be showing me all these cards, wasting time, if he actually got it right? Right, because theoretically, if we actually did get it right, we would just hand the deck to them and let them do it, which is exactly what you do, by the way. If the card that you guess that's right near the bottom happens to be right, you can just hand it out right away. I will typically cut the deck so it's closer to the middle. So let's say I say, you know, I go like this, I'm in this position, I say, name any card, they say, queen of clubs, I'll say, perfect. 
check the card and they'll spread and reveal the queen of clubs. All right, now in terms of some uses and other ideas, I just wanna reiterate guys, make sure you go check out the video of the open index because that's a super key to this. You'll learn why you do this spread beforehand, how to use the index, how to access it, how to make it convincing, how to be fast at it. In two seconds, you'll be able to access any card in the deck and that's super important for this effect, right? Again, if we got it right, why would we be spending all this time showing them this? Why wouldn't we just reveal the card right away? So that's why we need to be as quick as possible. They name their card, we say, perfect, you could have named any one of these cards. We get it under our control and we say, look, you could have named this one, you could have named this one, boom. And just like that, in an instant, Think about how fast that was realistically. I've reversed somewhere, there we go. I've reversed their card, okay? So you can go in, I don't know, three to five seconds, you can reverse any card in the deck, right? 10 of hearts, you could have named any one of these cards. Of course, they're all different. You could have said the two of diamonds, you could have said the queen of hearts, but you said the 10 of hearts, right? One little idea that I'll share quickly, I talked about this a bit in the open index video, is because of the nature of this, where the one card is, is low and reversed, you could peek the top few cards, and this is why I can help you, right? So as you're doing your prediction, you up jog or you're, you're searching, and you're just gonna peek and try to remember the top three or four cards, okay? You know, just kind of glance, and I'll just see those, and now I'll take it out, I'll do the process, reverse it, put it in, and now, if, I, if they name a card and I'm like, oh, that was one of the top cards, I can just close right away. And if I happen to remember the order, wonderful. If not, I'll take this, I'll close it right away, spread instantly to the top. And if it's the nine of diamonds, I'll just call that to the top really, really quickly. And that'll just save having to do this, 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 and then notice the nine of diamonds at the top. It's just gonna save some time, right? So if you peek those top few cards, that are gonna be sort of to the left of the, the face down card, it works. Like I said, it's not a huge deal. If you have to go through to the last second and they end up seeing that reversed card, it's fine. I mean, they know it should be there. So if it's like the two of hearts, right? What it would kind of look like is you say, name any card, they say two of hearts, you say, perfect. You could have named any one of these or any one of these. I come down, I see it's on that side of the card. So I'll cover it and I'll say, but you said the two of hearts and I'll close it up quickly do the reversal boom and of course this card would be concealed and i reveal the two of hearts now on that note i suppose you could also do this with the spread you just need to keep a block at the bottom and you spread like this have them take out the card like that uh, i prefer the fan in the hands method you know obviously because this is a street in the hands trick for me now there is an idea of doing this a little bit more similarly to a regular invisible deck where you start with the cards inside the box and you say name any card that you want in this case you also wouldn't have to have a card reversed and would save you that cleanup and you could be totally clean at the end. I don't like it as much and I would recommend not doing it and here's why. The psychology of this routine, it's a lot better that they see you reverse the card and place it in the middle because now they've actually seen you do it. They know you're not lying. They know there's a card reversed in the deck. So what that does is when you're searching through the deck using the open index, it's not suspicious that you're looking for their card because if they assume that this is gonna work, they assume your card is already reversed in the deck. Whereas if they don't know that there's, a, if you just tell them I've reversed one card in the deck, name any card, and then you start doing this, right? I mean, it still works, but then you do this, you do this, you do this, and you do this, you know, it, it kind of ends up being like, okay, maybe that's when you reverse the card. The other thing that happens is because they only see, when you do the fan, one card reversed, even though there's another one hidden, psychologically, they don't think there's any way that this could be a, a different card. They don't, can't think that you would have reversed another card because the one, they would see another card and they know there's no way you had enough time to not only reverse this, but reverse that one back. So it really works psychologically and helps build credibility when they see you reverse a card and then you spread a little bit later and they see that reverse card again. They naturally just assume it was the same card that was always there from the start. Whereas if you just tell them there's a card reversed and never really show them, they will be more likely to assume that, hey, he must have just reversed my card at some point. Right? They'll just assume at some point in that you did sleight of hand and reversed their card. Whereas this way, when they already see it, they already know there's a card reversed. So now when you do the reveal, 
and they see one card reversed, which is congruent with what happened at the beginning, they'll assume that that's the card that's been there the whole time and it makes the effect much stronger. Now, if you don't wanna you know, have the card reversed, you just say, all right, I've reversed one card out of all of these cards in the deck. I flipped it the other way around. I want you to name any card you want, the 10 of diamonds. You go through, you say the 10 of diamonds, that's interesting, you could have said any card, control it to the top, do the reversal with all the justifications and then you can instantly spread and reveal it. Now, like I said, there's a problem. It doesn't hit as hard with the psychology. The psychology is stronger the other way. The other issue is that if you end up sp having to spread through the entire deck because there are cards near the bottom, they're never going to see a reversed card in the deck at the beginning. So it takes credibility away from the effect that way. Now, a lot of the time, you won't end up spreading through the whole deck, so they'll just assume it's in this half. But even if you do, I mean, this sort of rocking motion that you're doing with the open index, if you don't know what I mean by that, that means you haven't watched the open index video yet and you need to go watch it. But anyway, with the rocking motion, maybe they'll assume that they just missed it, but still, I would highly recommend you do it the original way. All right, guys, that is it for my impromptu invisible deck. I hope you enjoyed that effect. A whole lot of fun, one that I love quite a bit. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know how this stacks up to other invisible decks that are impromptu that you've seen. Now, of course, you could just go buy an invisible deck and do it that way, but if you're like me, and you like to, you know, you only really use shuffled decks, this is a great effect to do with one. So enjoy that. You know, I wanna welcome the new subs. Thank you to everyone who's been supporting. Thank you guys very much. Uh, lots of great stuff coming in the future. We got some really awesome videos. So. With all that said, guys, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will catch you in the next video.